morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here is your detailed weather forecast update for Monday the 8th of December 2025, not long till 2026 now. We had a good outbreak of thunderstorms through the northeast of New South Wales and into southeastern Queensland last night. You can see it coming through on the radar of satellite imagery over the last 24 hours right now. There were some severe ones in the northeast of New South Wales, particularly we had some very strong wind gusts, some large hailstones as well through pockets of northeastern New South Wales and some excellent rainfall accumulations through parts of southeastern Queensland, multiple locations picking up in the 50 millimetre realm and a few personal weather stations getting closer to 70 or even 75 millimetres. Some ripper lightning displays as well, particularly around the Gold Coast, which copped a mean storm in the early evening hours rolling through the Tweed Heads in the Gold Coast area before moving out into the Pacific Ocean. That was quite a storm indeed. And thunderstorms made it pretty far north as well. In fact, we saw a couple of late night storms that have only cleared off in the last hour or so, making it as far north as Bundaberg and Harvey Bay. I didn't expect thunderstorms to make it up into the Capricornia coastline, but they got really, really close and they gave it a red hot crack and a couple of thunderstorms as well into parts of the Sunshine Coast including a good thunderstorm that blew through the Wyvernhoe Outlook and up into the Caboolture and Brabi Island area through the Glasshouse Mountains last night at about 11 o'clock that one had a lot of lightning in it as well and kept people in the Ipswich area awake for a long time but apart from that it is clear now for Queensland and we're going to have another week of calmer conditions before that boss's weather returns as we get out towards next weekend with a couple more thunderstorms expected around the 13th and the 14th of December. Now today Today was uh, kind of hyped up throughout the course of the week to be maybe something, but it really is not going to be anything. We have some very piss poor conditions through parts of southeastern Queensland today for thunderstorm potential. If we have a look at our convective available potential energy values yesterday, we're looking at numbers around the 2,000 mark. Today, they are well below 1,000 and into the Brisbane area around 500. This is just not enough to get thunderstorms off the ground. And today, as a result, we're really not going to see any thunderstorm development of any significant capacity through southeastern Queensland. We could see one or two weak storms around the Kingaroy area north of Toowoomba. They're going to happen in the mountainous valleys, so basically in the national parks, it's really not going to impact too many people, that's for sure. And I don't think they're going to be strong at all. There's no risk of heavy rainfall, no risk of strong winds. These thunderstorms really don't look to be anything significant at all on the current forecast modelling. Further inland, we may see a strong thunderstorm or two towards the north of Roma and Charleville. We do have some more respectable convective available potential energy values up here, and a couple of thunderstorms may develop as they move up towards the north, and also some decent humidity values streaming in from the Pacific Ocean here, which could fuel a rather mean non-severe thunderstorm outbreak towards the north of Charleville. But again, I wouldn't be getting my hopes up for anything too flash out here. One or two thunderstorms is possible, and one or two thunderstorms may make it as close to the Rockhampton coastline into the northern stretches of the Capricornia coastline in central Queensland. And as we roll this forecast modelling forward, you can see Tuesday is expected to be a similar situation. A couple of thunderstorms in towards central Queensland, maybe one or two thunderstorms into the northeast of New South Wales on Tuesday, but again, a big nothing burger, all things considered. And keeping this forecast rolling forward, Wednesday we'll see a return to severe thunderstorms into southwestern Queensland, west of a line between Longreach and Charleville. So think Bedori, Birdsville, uh, Windora, Thargaminda. Conditions very much warming up out here, and we're going to be seeing some significant thunderstorm activity as a result. But of an outback variety, which means really, again, nothing of the severe variety can be expected. A couple of stronger thunderstorms into the northern parts of New South Wales, particularly around Narrabri and Moree on Wednesday, and a couple of thunderstorms also possible around Lightning Ridge into the north of uh, New South Wales. But definitely expecting New South Wales to be the stormiest place in the next week. Conditions are going to get very stormy on Thursday through New South Wales. We could be looking at a similar outbreak to what we saw this weekend, with solid thunderstorm activity in this black circle on Thursday, the 11th of December. And this includes Tamworth, Moree, Narrabri, Newcastle, and then up towards Tyree, Kempsey and Coffs Harbour. Some very solid thunderstorm activity could be on the cards through this part of New South Wales. And we could be talking about some mean severe thunderstorms as well on the backside of this out around the Dubbo and the Orange area. So Thursday is going to be a day to watch. Sydney could also cop some significant severe thunderstorm activity for New South Wales. And then over the border in towards south central Queensland up to Charleville and Roma, a couple of thunderstorms also possible in towards south central Queensland. Convective available potential energy values are okay on Thursday. There again, nothing too flash for New South Wales. They do get a little bit better and these numbers do start to increase as we get out to about Friday and you can see those numbers really beginning to build on Friday which could give us some pretty intense outback thunderstorms out around the Thargaminder and the Bonaring area in towards western New South Wales and Queensland and a couple of good thunderstorms possible once again on Friday into Queensland's thunderstorm alley out here around Roma and Injun which has been pretty quiet all things considered so far this year especially thinking back to last year these areas have been relatively quiet but Roma has had their fair share of thunderstorm activity 
They've been smashed by pretty uh, pretty much every single severe thunderstorm outbreak out here. And by Friday the 12th of December, it's looking like no different out into this part of Queensland. We're going to be seeing an uptick in humidity streaming in uh, from the Coral Sea and the Pacific Ocean. This is going to be all because of a tropical low that's developing up here into the Solomon Sea. And I'll touch on that in just a few moments. But this rainfall that's going to be streaming in will kick off uh, in a pretty significant capacity on Friday. We could be seeing some steady but not too heavy rainfall accumulation through the northeast of New South Wales, and then that will tend to thunderstorms further inland. And this moisture that's going to be streaming through is as a result of that tropical cyclone. So you could almost call it tropical cyclone based, but of course, no impacts expected or no significant impacts can be expected through this part of Australia, Queensland, or New South Wales whatsoever. Now, Saturday, the 13th of December, a couple more thunderstorms in, you guessed it, New South Wales. Clearer and calmer conditions for southeastern Queensland. I do believe that that's how the weekend is going to roll starting off calm before Sunday. We see a return to severe thunderstorm activity once again through parts of southeastern Queensland. Again, we're looking quite long range here, so we take this one with a heavy pinch of salt, but right now, convective available potential energy value is looking pretty healthy. We may have another southerly trigger as well, but this time it looks like it's going to be well south into central New South Wales, which will reduce that risk for Queensland as the forecast models continue to push further out into the week. So I do think that for Sunday, this now does become a day to watch for potentially dangerous severe thunderstorm activity, but right now, mostly on the New South Wales side of things into the central coast. For southeastern Queensland, it's still far too early to say for sure. But this weekend, keep an eye on the forecast. Things may get interesting through parts of southeastern Queensland, and things are likely to get interesting across the northeast of New South Wales. Pushing things forward into the Silly Range on the forecast, modelling more thunderstorms expected after the 15th of December for a couple of days. It looks like we may be talking about a prolonged severe thunderstorm outbreak once again between the 14th out to the 18th of December before a little bit of rainfall kicks in for the North Queensland coastline, but again, details on that are still rather murky. And that does lead us nicely on into our more tropical focused part of this forecast update is where is this rainfall? Because as we know, we were expecting an early start to the monsoon that hasn't quite arrived just yet, but rainfall is slowly beginning to trickle on the upwards trend uh, through parts of Northern Queensland, particularly into the later parts of this forecast period, we will be talking about a bit of an uptick in rainfall for the Cassiope Coast and the Daintree rainforest as these southeasterly winds do begin to increase. And yesterday we were talking about a bit of, a bit of an uptick in rainfall through parts of the, of the central and the north Queensland coastline. A little bit more uncertainty around that on today's forecast modelling here, but I definitely expect after about the 15th of December, a bit of a general uptick in rainfall and shower activity coming in from the Coral Sea. It will be a bit of an interesting time to watch. I don't expect anything too crazy. We're not talking about anything more than about 125, 150 millimetres or so, particularly for the Capricornia coastline. I'd be surprised if more than 100 millimetres fell there, but just keep an eye on the forecast modelling because this rainfall will likely be on the increase after the 15th of December, particularly if we do see a coral, a coral Sea tropical cyclone, which is looking quite possible right now. And with that monsoon, that will be bringing those healthy rainfall accumulations to parts of uh, northern Queensland as well. So we will keep close tabs on that. Now you've heard me say Coral Sea Tropical Cyclone, Coral Sea Tropical Cyclone. Well, let's talk about it right now. We are seeing an uptick, a significant uptick in rainfall and moisture activity through parts of northern Australia. And that is as that monsoon trough does begin to strengthen those northwesterlies, really pick it up across the Northern Territory. We still have that developing area of low pressure offshore from the Northern Territory that's sliding out into the Indian Ocean. I'll touch on that in just a few moments, but I would just like to briefly talk about our situation here uh, for the Coral Sea. You can see as we pull this forecast right out in the 11th of December, the 12th of December now, a tropical low does begin developing around the Solomon Islands into the Solomon Sea. And as this low pressure system does begin to properly develop, it's going to head down towards the south, across towards Vanuatu, uh, and either stretch itself out towards New Caledonia or across towards Fiji. In short, not a threat or a concern to the Australian mainland at this point in time, and that's not expected to change either. And you can see as we keep pushing this forecast modelling out, it remains a rather weak system. People in intensity on Sunday the 14th of December and then out to Tuesday and Wednesday the 16th and 17th of December respectively. The remnants of this low pressure system car get somewhere around the Vanuatu area and you can even see the GFS forecast model which has been very bullish over the last couple of days really not calling for this system to amount to much. What we're going to be seeing from this is a broad stretched area of low pressure and really not a major concern for Vanuatu or the South Sea Islands in the Pacific Ocean. I really don't think that this is going to be too much of a concern for those locations anymore and a 
tropical cyclone, whilst it is now a 50-50 possibility to develop, I really don't think if it does develop, it's going to get up into towards any kind of reasonable or significant intensity. Category 1 status at the absolute highest end of things, and Category 2 status beyond is virtually impossible for this system right now, because as we have spoken about in previous forecast updates, that jet stream is still blowing hard and fast, and that's why systems will not develop in the Coral Sea until this jet stream sinks further south, pushed along by the monsoon, which is going to be at least another two, potentially three or even four weeks away. Uh, and that's also why systems that approach Vanuatu and Fiji, which is kind of in the jet stream right now or under the jet stream, uh, these systems are really going to struggle before approaching those locations, which means they're going to be a lot weaker, stripped of convection, and the rainfall risk is going to be pretty minimal as a result as well. Now, I have been made aware that there is a cruise ship leaving Brisbane and heading up towards Vanuatu from the 18th of December onwards. The risk to that cruise ship is extremely minimal at this point in time. Unless we see a massive cyclone go through Vanuatu, I see no reason why you should be worried about at all. Uh, this cruise ship being rescheduled or cancelled altogether from Brisbane, uh, I really don't think that's going to happen at all, and the chances of that happening are pretty much next to nothing. So for Vanuatu, if you're heading on that cruise, enjoy it. Look forward to it because nothing is going to be changing from its itinerary right now. And moving back towards Western Australia, like I said, we do have that low chance of development here around 10% that the Bureau of Neology has marked. This is offshore from the Northern Territory, and it is, again, no threat to Western Australia or the Northern Territory. Heading out into the Indian Ocean, where it is expected to begin developing sometime around the 15th of December. In fact, it could begin developing a little bit earlier than that. We've also got another area of low pressure that's going to develop here around Indonesia, and it's a bit of a coin toss as to whether or not uh, that system is going to make it towards tropical cyclone status as well. Case in point, one tropical cyclone is pretty likely now around the 15th of December in the West Australian waters. What system it will be is still rather unknown. Will it be tropical low 05U, I believe, which is over here offshore from the Northern Territory, or will it be tropical low 06U here offshore from Indonesia? I believe that's these storms designations. It's got to be one or the other. It can't really be both. There's not enough moisture and not, uh, not enough healthy air for there to be two systems simultaneously offshore from Western Australia at this point in time. The GFS forecast model is calling for our Indonesia system here over the Cocos Keeling Islands to make it to tropical cyclone status, whereas the ECM, which I find has a little bit more reliability, especially in the long range, is calling for the West Australian system to become that tropical cyclone. And quite a mean system at that, up to around 965 millibars before it gets down into the graveyard and carks it before it is any problem to the West Australian mainland at all. Um, case in point, there's really no threat to the Northern Territory or the West Australian mainland right now. These systems are not going to approach them at any kind of reasonable intensity. And again, for reasons similar to that Coral Sea system, high levels of wind shear, but also with those high pressure systems situated over central WA and the Northern Territory, pushing out all of that dry air and high levels of wind shear offshore from the Pilbara coastline and the Kimberley coastline. It's really going to give these systems a hard time as they approach the West Australian coastline. So anything that does go for WA is going to weaken off dramatically before making a landfall. And these systems are just not expected to be steered into Western Australia either. Both of them, if they do develop heading out to the graveyard uh, at some point in their lifespans instead of heading towards Western Australia and the Northern Territory. So nothing to be uh, worried about, but definitely a feature that I'd be watching quite closely. Apart from that, though, that is going to do it for today's weather forecast update. A little bit shorter and sweeter today. There's not an awful lot to be talking about or making a good mention of. The thunderstorm risk is pretty minimal, and if we talk about our rainfall risk, whilst it is increasing for a few locations, particularly through the Northern Territory and Western Australia, the remainder of the nation is remaining dry, as you would expect. We're still kind of in that change of a period after those spring thunderstorm risks do begin to drop off a little bit, particularly for southeastern Australia, where our spring thunderstorm chances are now beginning to drop off a little bit. We're just waiting for this rainfall now to build across northern Australia. It's doing it slowly but surely, and I do believe that these tropical cyclones will usher in the official start of the monsoon, which does normally happen, uh, especially for northern Queensland, normally just before Christmas time. But this year, looking like it's going to be closer, if not after the new year, and that's when the real rainfall is going to pick up for northern Queensland. So, a quiet two week period ahead of our us, all things considered, particularly for this time of the year, but it is not going to remain like that for much longer. A massive thank you to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now. And again, a massive thank you to all of those that have joined in in the last couple of months on the streams and have subscribed and whatnot. The growth has been absolutely incredible. I could not thank each and every one of you guys enough. Go check out the Facebook page as well. I'll have further updates throughout the course of the week over there. I'll have another climate update at some point this week, whether that's on Wednesday or Thursday on the La Nina situation when this rainfall is finally going to begin to occur across Northern Australia. But apart from that, I'm going to take the foot off the gas this week, give a little bit of breathing space space to those interested in the severe weather because there is a pretty minimal threat this week. But that's going to do it for me today. We'll keep on uh, keep an eye on the situation over in New South Wales. I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.